Hello, uh, hi again. In this part of the presentation, we're going to uh, do some experiments uh, to find out what the AC and DC characteristics are of the probe, the, i.e. the transfer characteristics. Um, but firstly, we're going to look at the DC characteristics. And uh, so let's just um, pull this up. And so we're looking at this when the probe is in times one and also in times 10 mode to see uh, what effect it has uh, on circuits and how important it is to understand what's going on so you can actually um, choose whether it's a times one mode or a times 10 mode that you actually want. Um, so first of all, we're going to actually look at the uh, simple formula associated with voltage division. And uh, this is like a level one degree type uh, electronics um, where uh, this is the uh, standard voltage divide uh, equation where you've got a resistor R1 another resistor R2, and these are in series. And actually you've got V in here, V out here, and you're looking at the relationship of V in, or V out, V in, um, uh, depending on what's going on with these resistors. So the formula is V out is equal to V in um, times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this can be rearranged such that R2 is equal to R1 over V in over V out minus one. So this formula may well be familiar to you, uh, but if not, don't worry about it. Um, it I'll, I'll mention it later on and it's all written down, but you get a rough idea of what's going on and how important this is. So here we have a circuit uh, for testing the DC transfer characteristics of our probe. Now, I've got a, a power supply here, which is 9.8 volts. The reason for choosing 9.8 will become apparent in a minute. It seems a bit of a strange number, but um, uh, there, was, there was a reason behind it. And here we have a series of resistors. We've got 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, and 10 megs. And we're gonna have some test equipment here in a minute. But ideally, your test equipment shouldn't uh, change any of the characteristics in your circuit. Now, uh, so ideally, if this was um, a perfect piece of equipment, it would have no load resistance. I would have it, well, it would have a, an infinite uh, load resistance. So it didn't affect your circuit, which means that in this condition, if I put my test equipment across here to ground, then because there's no, this has got an uh, infinite impedance, therefore there's no current flowing through here. Therefore the voltage here is the same as the voltage there because there's no current flowing. And that's our ideal scenario. However, in reality, that's not what happens. And this is why it's important to understand this. So here we have um, a simplified version of what's going on uh, with the probe here and the picoscope. Now you'll see I've uh, set the probe here with a resistance of 360 ohms. And that's because that's what I measured. If I, I got a multimeter and I took um, a resistive measurement between the tip of the probe and the pin inside the BNC connector that we discussed earlier. And that resistance is approximately 360 ohms. So uh, this is just a, an approximation of what's going on because it's not just a, a simple wire that goes from the probe tip through the BNC connector. So there's our 360 uh, ohms. And also inside the picoscope, there is actually a one mega ohm resistor uh, across the input. And uh, it's important we actually understand what is now the impact of all of this on this circuit. And here I have a circuit with the uh, 1K, 10K, uh, 100K, 1 meg and 10 meg resistor. These are around about 1% 1, uh, 1 resistors, these ones here. And I'm also going to connect my uh, uh, scope probe uh, ground to my common ground of my circuit here. And I'm also going to connect the um, hook tip to the power line of this circuit like that, which is the power bus here. And I've got a power supply that's generating around about 9.8 volts. So here I've pulled up uh, the um, mean of the voltage. This is from the measurements. If I go to more, you'll see the measurements bit here. So what I've done here is actually pulled up the mean of the signal. And uh, let me just check my probe is on times one. So I'm just going to double check that everything's okay because I do a lot of setting up with this. So there's my probe, it's on times one and the vertical is on plus or minus 10. And you'll see here that uh, we've got around about 9.8 volts. Now, what's important is what happens when I actually move this probe around my circuit. 
Now, ideally, we don't want it to have any influence at all um, because we should always see 9.8 volts. However, that's not actually what happens because of the nature of the probe and the nature of the picoscope itself. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, measure and monitor this voltage here um, as I move it around my circuit. So this is my power supply going in, which is around about 9.8 uh, volts. And I'm going to move my scope probe and I'm going to put it to the other side of my 1K resistor. And now you can see it's dropped a teeny weeny bit and it's now it's like 9.79, uh, uh, 9.8. But as I now move this probe further down my circuit, so this is now the 10K resistor, we've now got 9.72 volts. If I move it down to uh, the uh, 100K, we've now got 8.9 volts move it down to the one meg and we've got 4.9, which has really significantly affected it. And at 10 megs, we've got um, 0.88 volts. So as I've moved my probe through this circuit with different uh, resistors, the signal has been significantly affected. So let's have a look at what's happening. So let's go back to our presentation. So this is the uh, test we've been doing and I've tabulated those results. And you can see that there's our supply voltage of approximately 9.82. I did fill this in earlier on, so these numbers may vary a little bit from what we just went through, um, but it's just to get the table done. So um, when you monitor uh, at 1K, we see um, the voltage is being seen by the picoscope, which is fundamentally at this point here is uh, 9.81 uh, volts. And then similarly at 10K, we've got 9.72, 100K, 8.93, 1 meg, 4.93, and at 10 megs, we've got 0.9. So this uh, probe and picoscope, and particularly the picoscope, is actually interfering uh, with, with creating a voltage divider network. And it's really important to understand this because when you come to measure in DC circuits, then uh, the resistance of your test equipment, i.e. the impedance of your test equipment, does have an effect uh, on your measurement. So what we can say from this is that um, if we use the voltage divider equation, we can actually try and calculate actually what the theoretical value is from these results. So uh, R2 is equal to R1 over V in over V out minus one. So if we plug in some values here, now R1, I'm trying to find the voltage at this point here, which is the bit that's actually going into the picoscope itself. So I'm going to take the 10 meg uh, resistor. So we've got 10 megs. Um, plus the 360 ohms that we've got in here. So that's that number here, divided by our voltage supply, which is 9.82, and divided by the um, output voltage at 10 megs, which is 0 0.9 minus one. And that gives us approximately 1.009 uh, mega ohms, which actually is really good because that's actually what's inside the picoscope. So through this theory, we've demonstrated that we can show that the input impedance of our picoscope is actually one meg. Um, so this means that in times one mode, then you have to understand that uh, when you attach a probe and the picoscope to your circuit, you do actually influence the circuit and therefore it may change the, the characteristics of your circuit because you've got a, um, a probe in there. And uh, what we need to do is actually find out, well, if that's in times one, then what happens in times 10? So let's actually do that now. So we're going to change this, and this is the uh, times 10. Now in a times 10 probe, it switches in nine meg resistor. This gives our 10 to one uh, ratio here. So what we're gonna do is do the same test all over again but we're going to uh, change our setup. And I'm gonna change the uh, probe to times 10 and make sure the vertical is still on that. And uh, what I also want to do now is uh, show you what I'm doing. Let me put my probe back onto here. And so there's my uh, voltage uh, going in here. That's my bus bar on the top bar there. Right, so we're now on the times 10 probe and here is the voltage at uh, around about 9.8 volts going in. And uh, what I want to do is now I'm gonna record that. That's my main power supply going in. Now, if I go to the other side of my 1K resistor, you'll see that that, uh, has, that hasn't really changed, which is good. I'm now going to uh, move this to my 10K resistor. 
and you'll see it's just dropped a little bit here to a 9.8 volts ish and now on the 100k and we're now on 9.7 on my 100k we're on 8.9 and on my uh, 10 meg here is uh, 4.9 so this is a quite a significant difference having it on times 10 so let's uh, look at the tabulated results for this so let me just go uh, to uh, this screen uh, back here so i've tabulated those results and so at 1k we had 9.83 which is great and all the way through down to 10 meg so what we see here is i'm putting our probe on a times 10 we've got uh, a much larger impedance now and therefore it doesn't load this circuit in quite the same way and so that means that um, we are by putting a probe on times 10 we have less of an impact on our circuit from a dc perspective and so once again if we're going to use a choice between times 1 and times 10 when it comes to dc circuits then uh, unless it's very small signals then I would certainly recommend uh, going to the uh, times 10 mode um, because you'll get a better response because your probe and oscilloscope are not interfering with the circuit in the same sort of way and so that's it from a dc perspective we're going to take a break now and um, then we're going to look at it from an AC perspective in the next video.